Don't be so aggressive, please. Okay? Just, just, as far. Exactly. So before so we start, don't be a terrorist like you are. No sensitive. He accepts the Bible's rule and oh, do not touch the dirty people. He's following the Quran he and he's not. Want So here's the thing. Um, what's your name, sir? Uh, you can call me John. I'm John. joking. Call me. Can you say Ijaz? Ijaz. 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 Like Ijaz. Sir. Ijaz. So while you were on the letter, you came and then you wanted to call. Okay. So Discuss I'm here. Before, before any recordings, yeah. so just agree so we don't debate about the debate. Just, I am here, and I assume you wanted to talk because you are apologist or you are polemist. I'm just a Muslim. You are just a Muslim. Okay. Just, is it just a Muslim? Can you just tell me who is Allah praying in Surah 33 verse 56? We're discussing the topic. No, no, no. Let's, let's do that. Let's, let's discuss about that. No, no. Who is Allah praying? Let me, let me. Yeah, prayer. The topic that I want to do is the topic Sir, she speaks about. Sir, please speak a corner. Uh, while you came to Leda, we were talking about how Allah commits shirk with Muhammad. So, now, I ask you my first question. Who is Allah praying in Surah 33, verse 56? So, no, it does, it does, it does. Let's, let's debate that first and we can debate your topic. Let's just, yeah. Let me discuss what it's we're going to say. It's not your topic, my topic. This is Hold speaker's on. caller. Mm. Right. It is yeah. not so, pre-arranged debate, is it? Hold on, I'm speaking to Daniel. He's got so much mic. Brother, brother. 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 Daniel, I'm speaking to you as a human, right? Can we agree? Well, I'm not an animal. I'm not human. You never know. Uh, we're right. going to have this uh, friendly discussion. Yeah. So we're just gonna before, yeah. before we start, before we start, we're going to have friendly discussion. Before we start, let us agree terms. with the debate. Yeah, okay, fine. Don't doing. agree so with the debate. Exactly. So, Ijaz, we said... So, don't be so aggressive, please. Okay? Just Ijaz, exactly. So, before we start... Don't be a terrorist like you are. No sensitive. You are accusing me of terrorism. I have a question. Can you apologize to me calling me terrorist? You are a terrorist and I'll show you why. Can you? Can you? I'll show you why. Okay, just a moment. Just a moment. Brother, just a moment. Can you? Islamic Dawah team just called me terrorist. I want Islamic Dawah team to back that up. I will. What I preach, all is it. I love you. Do you want to be on that? I am not a Muslim. I'm not I Muhammad can't. or Allah. Me, Daddy, so I'm why okay. did you call me terrorist? I'll tell you why. I'll show you why. Can you no, apologize? Can you no, apologize? I'll prove it. The proof that I am terrorist. Daniel, Daniel, Daniel. Let me speak to Daniel. Yeah, but why don't you speak to me? You accused her. No, we came to you under that. You spoke to her. You spoke to you, correct? You want to talk both of us. So let's arrange the topic of the debate, please. Okay? We said to you, why is Allah praying in the Quran? I don't accept that. It's not a demand, it's a negotiation. You agree to that? It's a negotiation. We're not in a university, we're in speaker's corner. Exactly. Well, that doesn't matter. Okay, you approach me. Okay, can we debate on Allah's praying, please? No, I want to decide the topic between two of us. Okay, so, so let's give so, Listen, it we don't want to take long on this. Yeah, of course okay, we have to. In that case, let me break it down. Okay, here's the thing. First of all, if you want to get me to get involved, can you just apologize? 
Why did you call me terrorist and bring your evidence that I am terrorist? Okay, Jay Smith in California said that you got your brothers killed because of your statements. Therefore, I consider you a criminal and a person that approached the Home Office under false pretenses to seek asylum. You got your brothers killed, as Jay Smith said. So on his own testimony, I am afraid that you will get other people killed because of your aggressive actions. Now, either Jay Smith lied in California or you're the liar. So if you want to, if I have to apologize, I apologize for what Jay Smith said okay. about so Catherine Fash. Jay Smith said that you got I your mean, brothers killed. Yes. I got my brothers killed yes, because, because of what? Because of what you say and what you did. Because what I said and what I people, did. Yes. I provoke people. Yes. Can yes. we just find that video? I'm not going to you find it yourself. I would love to know what I said that my brothers are killed that I'm seeking so no, no, asylum. Hatun, 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 wait. You believe Jay Smith? Yes, I on that, fully, fully. but you don't believe Jason when he exposes his love. Yeah, fully, fully. So why would you believe him in that? Because How is he not lying? He says that how come he might be lying the way he's lying no, about Islam, the, the way you think so. No, I know it's the truth. I'll tell you why I know it's the truth. <laughs> okay, okay you know what? You know what? Just, that's, just, 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 that's not even the topic. Yeah. Let's get on to the you need topic. To apologize. Okay. No, to apologize. Apologize. okay. I apologize for what Jay said Smith about Tatum. You need to apologize. I'm quoting Jay Smith. So Jay Sorry, Smith made Joseph a claim. Smith. Hold on, Joseph Smith. Let Jay me, Smith made a claim me. because what I said in your I'm asylum application. And I'm asylum in Britain. Wow, I didn't know that, brother. I didn't know that either. Okay, you know what? Let's debate the topic. All right, can we start the debate, please? Thank you very much. He needs to apologize, though. He lied about it. We'll, we will. It's calling. Yeah. We need to agree because these cameras are waiting. People are waiting. So can we, we do 10 agree. minutes? Go. 10 minutes for a topic on Queen. 10 minutes on the clock to provide the money. 10 minutes. But how long do you want to go? But you need to finish a topic first. So give it a time limit. Which you might give take half an hour. Give it a time limit. Yeah, half an hour. So you agree to the two topics. You're not going to run after one has been discussed. Yeah, uh, guys, are we good to record? Are we yeah. good here? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Okay. Are you guys ready? Yeah. 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 Okay, next Puma, time let Puma. us know before you make a joke so we love This is a joke! This is a joke! That's a joke! Okay, focus, 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 focus. I moved that time, it's right there, she's done, I'm actually standing here. Please, don't be nasty to my brother! Excuse me! No, hold on. Hey, why are you bullying my brother? Hey, why are you bullying him? Why are you bullying? Why are you bullying my brother? You know I'm always doing it, man. Don't jump over. I'm running the show. I'm standing here. So we're waiting for you, JC and... I'm standing here. We're waiting for Muslim cameraman to apologize to our brother. Don't apologize. I'll apologize. Are you guys okay now? Can we start? I was always right, mate. What a big one. Oh, Hatton. That's cheating. Joking. Okay. You can start recording. <laughs> Here's my problem, sir. While I was on the ladder, you came out and you expressed that you want to have a discussion with me. And our topic is Tawhid. It was on the Tawhid on the wellness of Allah and how Allah commits shirk with Muhammad. But today, um, you, we want to have three sessions of two minutes on Allah is praying. So that's one of the things. So Allah is praying. Surah 33 verse 56 talks about Allah is praying with his angels upon Muhammad. Surah 33 verse 43, Allah is praying again. My question is very simple. Why you Muslims believe Allah is one being from eternity to eternity. He is all wise and all knowing. My question to Muslims is, who is the hero of the prayer of Allah when Allah prays for Muhammad? There must be someone who hears what Allah is saying and what Allah is asking. I am asking the simple question. Who is the hero of the prayer of Allah? And we look at Surah 33 verse 56, Surah 33 verse 43. Of course it gets worse. Hadith tells us Allah prays. Abu Umar reported the message.
messenger of Allah said, Allah and his messengers and the people of the heavens and the earth, even the ants on their rocks and fish, pray for blessing on those who teach people good. Question simple, who is the he of the prayer? I would like to thank Hatton for coming to the of this discussion I and appreciate that you were honest in what you said. You did get the references correct. Now, just okay, can you hear me now? Okay, so just to be clear here, there is something called relational verbs. I know English is not your first language, I know you haven't studied languages, but to be clear here, when we speak about God, the meaning of words change. So, for example, when Christians say that God died, you say it cannot apply to the divine nature. It's a relational verb. When it comes to the word Salah in the Quran, when it applies to God, it means something else. It's a relational verb. I'm sure you know what that term means. You seem like an educated lady, my child. Right. So when it says Allah prays, what does it mean by that? Of course, there's only one God. And Allah says in the Quran, thee alone do we ask for help. So there's only one person that we can get benefit from. That is Allah, the creator of the heavens and the earth. So in the Quran, what it's saying is that Allah gives his blessings, his rahmah upon the prophet peace be upon him. That's simply what it means. And to demonstrate this, I am looking at the word here. This is the Arabic Quran. Um, Hatun, can you do me a favor and read this word here? Well, sorry, you don't know Arabic, so I'll give it to you. The word is Allah. It means upon, not to, which is the word Allah. Uh, of course, you don't know that, right? But to make it simple to you, relational verb, words don't mean the same thing depending on the norm that they seconds. refer to. And thirdly, you don't know the Arabic of the Quran. But thirdly, if you understood Tawheed or monotheism, of course, as a polytheist, you don't. But in, in monotheism, God is the absolute power through which all benefit comes from. Everything that wills is according to His will only. So Salah, I want you to explain to me, in light of relational verbs in the Arabic language, why it applies to Allah, physically praying to someone as you pray. Thank you. You all heard the response. We all heard the response, but there was no answer to my question. My question still stands. Allah is praying upon Muhammad and there must be the hero of the prayer. It has nothing to do with I know Arabic or not. Because Islamic now want him, someone called Muhammad Hijab, on the platform confirmed, Allah is praying. I, I'm not four or two. I don't care that much about that part. My question is, who is the hero of the prayer? He just tells me Allah is sending Rahma, mercy. Excuse me, your Allah failed to communicate. Allah doesn't say Rahman, does he? Maybe, maybe. Let me congratulate you. Congratulations for stepping up and being the candidate to be Allah because you are telling me creator of all things Allah failed to communicate what he wanted to communicate. If the words are changing when it comes to the Allah, can you please provide a Quranic reference for me? Allah says for everyone else it is for everyone else it is pray but when it comes to me when I use it that is a blessing. That is a blessing. That will be shame. All knowing, all wise Allah cannot communicate. Can you also deal with the hadith reference? I put it. My question still stands. Who is the here of the prayer? There must be someone who is the here of the prayer. Tilmedi 1387. Tilmedi 1387. You ready? So Hatun, let me congratulate you. She said at the start that it doesn't matter if it means four or two, it doesn't matter. Allah is the poor communicator. 
But if you don't know the difference between four and two, the four communicator is you. Now, she also said, <laughs> it's good you're laughing, right? Now, I want you to also pay attention to this. She says the Quran communicates poorly. But I, I gave her a reference. When they say that God died upon the cross, they said cannot refer to one nature but another. This is an analogy, a comparison really. So when you say it's perfectly fine, you don't have consistent standards, the language doesn't matter, you don't know what relational words are, or the function of language, then you read things out of context. So my demand upon you is to show something that relational words do not exist in the Arabic language, they cannot apply to the Quran, they cannot apply to the verse. Now if you understand how you, you ask a ridiculous you ask a ridiculous question, you ask who heard, who hears the prayer? It's very simple. The Quran says Allah is all caring. He is the one controlling the blessings. He's not what do you think it's saying words praying upon him? What do you think? Where does it say what kind of prayer is given? Do you think he's giving the Lord's prayer to Jesus? The prophet? Come on. So my argument again to you is use your brain, Hatun. If the language of the Quran does not matter, bring your evidence that it does not. Okay. 30 seconds left. Okay, I'll make it simple then. You said the word Allah and Allah don't matter. So if the words don't matter, how do you come to the conclusion that you do? Tell me this. When you study the Bible, don't you have to go back to the original language, the Koine, to make sense of it? If you do that for the Bible, why won't you do that for the Quran? Give me a reference to a Muslim lexicon so that says it must mean literally praying to or worship of. Bring that for me. Quite simple. Yeah, let it go, let it go, let it go, let it go, let it go. And so, here is my problem, and I can see this is problem for all the Muslims. It just came all the way from somewhere to just have a discussion with me, yet here at Speaker's Corner, he puts his Allah, he puts his Prophet under the bus, and he butchers his Prophet and his Allah by stating actually Allah is saying something else. I simply ask the question, if Allah is failing to communicate, instead of Allah meant Rahman, instead of Allah meant Baraka, he needs to bring the Quranic verse. Allah says, when it comes to the other phrases, I mean when I say Salah is the Baraka or blessing, blessings or mercy. But Allah doesn't do that. I gave him the refer uh, reference for the hadith. Did you hear the answer? I didn't hear the answer. Yet, because there is no answer for my question. Let me give you another reference for you. Uh, uh, sorry. Also, he said Allah is the hero of the prayer. So Allah is praying to himself. Does anyone else see this problem here beside me? Allah is praying to himself. For, for who? For Muhammad. Here's what Muhammad says. This is your lovely prophet Muhammad. I, Muhammad said, Oh Gabriel, does your, pro does your Lord pray? He said, yes. Muhammad confirms Allah prays. Yet Islamic Dawatim doesn't confirm that. I said, what does he say? This is what he says. He says, glory, holy, Lord of angels and the spirit. My mercy overcomes my wrath. Who is the hero of the prayer? Glory be to Allah. This woman here stood here and said she laughed that God could pray to himself. Yet in the New Testament, what does Jesus do? She laughs that God can pray to himself. But what does Jesus do? He prays to himself. SubhanAllah. This is the, ridiculous of the ridiculousness of the Trinity. She mocks her own beliefs. Context does not matter. She said Allah is a poor communicator. But the words she said don't matter. How can you interpret a passage of the Quran and then say the words don't matter? What that means is that she's lying. She's making it up as she goes along. Now, she, I think that's she So, Hatton, Hatton, I am concerned about, let me be honest, right? You've got a simple question to me. Who is Allah praying to? My good friend here, Daniel, who I just met. I just met. Yeah, we'll go with that. We are unequally yoked, right? He had to correct her. You'll hear on the recording, 
he had to nudge her and say, not two, but four. So if her own brother in Christ has to correct her, then subhanAllah, the argument has been lost. So he's still praying. Quite simple. <laughs> Allah's still praying. <laughs> it's a real yeah, exactly. I'm in the debate, sir. You, you're talking I'm about me. I'm in the debate, sir. It doesn't matter if I'm talking about you. Uh, Please don't praise, answer that. Uh, uh, they're again no, Christian sorry. morality. Uh, they're not participating on children in the debate. So 30 seconds. What I would say is this. I have demonstrated that it's a relational verb. That one says it's not. What is the evidence for that? Nothing. I asked her about the difference between Allah and Allah. 402, she had no answer. I asked her, what could the word also mean? She had no answer. She said she just reads the translation. Hatun, the language is Arabic, not English. You need to have the common sense to go to scripture. That's basic ISIS usage, quite simple. Five seconds. I don't need five seconds. Hatun has proved my point no, no, no. for me. This is the last one. Just First for topic is finished. Yeah, just for the We're going to the second the topic. The is that you didn't answer the question intentionally. No, no, you, you respond, you didn't answer. That's it doesn't, ma it doesn't matter know. if it's four, a point or two. Allah is still praying. That's what, that's what it the... It doesn't matter. That doesn't matter. It does matter. That does matter. That's fine. The all is you didn't answer the question. Anyway, let the viewers decide. I answered the question as far as I The viewers can decide. Alright, next topic. What is the next topic? I have 57 English translations of this verse and we can ask her which of the translations says pray to pray for Palma, English! Palma, Palma. Mansoor, you're going to English now! <laughs> no, no, I don't know you! <laughs> no, no, I don't care! <laughs> Only for you! He's such a hypocrite! You're going to English now! No, no, I don't care! You! The hypocrisy of Dawah team! When it suits them, they go to the, uh, they go to the English! When it doesn't suit them, no, read the Arabic. I was only being Hypocrisy. charitable. Hypocrisy. Charitable. We never went to because the English. You don't want to know. Know. We never went to the English. I'm give you English. You you we went to the Arabic. 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 Ar
every single English translation says he died or he breathed his last breath. Wallahi, in the Greek, it does not say he breathed his last breath. So the fact is simple. If they can lie about the crucifixion, what else have they lied about? And I put the point to you. Bring me a single manuscript of the New Testament from the first 400 years that attests to the version of the crucifixion that is present in today's Bible. If you cannot, then you have acquiesced, you have conceded, you have acceded to the point that the New Testament is corrupted. Thank you. Here is what we have at speakers for now. Without any shame, Islamic Dawah simply tells us you cannot trust the New Testament. Without any shame. Look at him. Is there any shame in his face? Your mom would be shamed of you. Your Allah is shamed of you. And that's not enough. Muhammad is shamed of you. He is the reason. Quran came to confirm the Bible. There is nothing else Christians can stand unless without the gospel. While Quran fall in love with the New Testament, who do you think you are? You are telling me my New Testament is reliable? Last time when I checked, last time when I checked, you were not Allah and you don't look like Allah today either. For you to prove to me that New Testament is changed, first thing you've got to do is this is the Quran, word of Allah, produce the verse from the Quran, which simply tells me you cannot trust the word of God. Produce the verse for me, Allah condemns the gospel. No, Allah, Muhammad and the Islamic tradition is fall in love with the gospel. Quran talks about, Islamic tradition talks about, John is writing the biography of Jesus. Islamic tradition names the disciples of Jesus and tells us they were preaching the word of God. Yet, yet, Quran steps in and then tells us, I gave them the gospel. They've got nothing else to stand unless the gospel. If you stand here, tell me my Bible is not reliable, produce the book. Allah states, sir. You needed to listen, sir. I'm not going to let you I'm screaming like what? A banshee. So I'm screaming like a banshee, so he cannot understand. I'll deal with that when it comes to me. Are you ready, yeah? I'm ready. Go on. This woman claims shame on me. Shame, woman. I speak as Jesus spoke to his mother. Woman. So if you are ashamed of me using the words that Christ used for his own mother, then you are ashamed of your God. So let me make it clear. Let me make that into topic so don't interrupt you, the moderator. Know your place. Now let me be honest here. The topic was, is the New Testament corrupted? What did she do like a God commanded her to do? Go to the Quran. Now let me make something clear here. The topic is not about the Quran. You realize she cannot defend this Bible. The Bible does not stand on its own two legs. What does she do? Go to the Quran. But here's the Bible. Where is this book? You profess to believe in this, but she didn't quote any verses from it. She didn't appeal to it. She didn't say no Ijaz is lying. What did she say? She said, this man is not reliable. I don't, I can't speak about the New Testament to her. But I'm not the one speaking. The Christians are. This is a Christian Bible. I handed it to this man. He knows it's a Bible as well. In this Bible, I will show you the evidences. They show you where the interpolations, they show you where the changes are. This is not Ijaz speaking. This is her God speaking. Even J. Smith in his PhD thesis, which I have on my phone, says that the Bible has been changed. How God says it's been changed. In his thesis, she says no. I believe Hatun is the liar. 30 seconds. Oh, subhanallah, subhanallah. The answer is very simple. If you want to go to the Quran, that was for the other topic. Stick to the topic, don't change it. I'll make this clear. If she cannot stick to the topic, she can't defend this book. That's not my job, that's her job. If you hate this book, then say it openly. You cannot defend it. Give me one manuscript from the first 300 years of Christianity that testified to the crucifixion Five that seconds. you believe in. It does not exist. Sir, keep your commentary for yourself.
Where the beast you going? We're going to be patient. Sir, are you listening? Yes, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Here's the thing. Here what we end up. While Islamic Dawah is in the best speaker's corner, and they want to be candidate to be Allah and to be Muhammad, and as I'm speaking to him, he doesn't even look at me. That is the Islamic teaching. I already brought the verses. Don't heckle. Don't heckle. I already brought you the verses from the Quran. Bible is the word of God. Allah says no one can change the word of God. Therefore, if Islamic Dawah team stands here and then tells me word of God has been corrupted, all I can say to you, you are apostate. You are apostate and watch out for those apostates. Christians, please protect him. We all know what Islam teaches about apostasy. Here is the thing. Here is the thing. Bible, especially Gospels, 5,856 Greek manuscripts, which confirms the current Bible I am reading. Remember the number. 5,856 Greek manuscripts. Earliest manuscripts is dated P52, 125 AD, which is, which is, talks about while Jesus in front of the judge confirms my Bible, beside history confirms the reliability of the New Testament, Mark Urban confirms the reliability of the New Testament, alongside of Allah, alongside of Muhammad, alongside of Islamic, tur Islamic tradition, versus Islamic Dawah him, discredits my Bible, of course your mom is shamed of you, of course your Allah is shamed of you. Allahu Akbar! Allahu Akbar! This woman is an ignoramus. She says 5,800. Sir, calm yourself. 5,800 Greek New Testament manuscripts testify to the version today. You woman are a liar. There are only seven papyri from the second century, 63 from the second and the third. Where did you get 1,500 from? That is from the ninth century onwards. So she is lying. She is dependent on manuscripts after nascent Islam in Arabia to prove her Bible. So she, mis she misunderstands how the Bible was received today. Secondly, she refers to P52. She is an ignoramus. P52 is paleographically dated. You don't give up one year for a paleographic date. You have a range. The range extends from 125 CE up until the 4th century. She does not know this. An ignoramus will give you one year. It's a range of years. You match it based on the writing style. She gets the year 125 because the letter alpha has a hook on it. Because the letter alpha has a curve on it, she says it's the year 125. So she is a liar. The manuscripts do not attest to her Bible from the first century or not to her second. I put the point to her. The words of Jesus on the cross, Matthew chapter 27, verse 46, do not come from the first century, do not come from the second, third, or fourth. They come from the fifth century, 100 years before. So it's very simple. If she rejects the Quranic narrative because it's later, why does she accept it when the New Testament is 500 years later? This is the hypocrisy of Christians. She spoke, she spoke about my shame. I have no shame. I am proud of my God. I am proud of my God and what he has allowed me to learn about this book. I reject it because of you and your nasty behavior. So let's just conclude what we have here. I'm not going to deal with your personal attacks because I am not that small. He is the, he is the problem. He is the problem. Quran confirms the Bible. Quran confirms the Bible. Muhammad confirms the Bible and no one can change the word of God. Yet if it just thinks people change the word of God, you've got to get bigger God because your Allah is not capable to protect the Bible. Here's the problem. Let's say sake of the argument. I need 
you to check the manuscripts for the Matthew 27. Here's the thing, sake of the argument, even the earliest writing regarding the Matthew reference from the 5th century, that still confirms Islamist false religion because that 5th century writing tells us Jesus died on the cross. He took his last breath. The verses, Islam comes and tells us, no, by the way, Jesus didn't die. So thank you for confirming Islam is false religion, Quran is false book, and Muhammad is false prophet. For those of you who are interested in it, I have full list of the Greek manuscripts. I'm going to read them for you. So you can be ensured how the Bible in New Testament is reliable. 5,856 Greek manuscripts today stand alone to confirm my Bible. So here's the name of the manuscripts. P52. P52, P90, P98, P64, P67. No Wikipedia, sir. I've done my homework. Don't have help. P46, P66. So how would you, how would you know? We have to relax. No, this is speaker's corner. You just have to uh, go around. So what would then be blessing you? 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 All right, we're going to the third topic. Is Muhammad a true or false prophet? You ready? So topic is if Muhammad is true and false prophet. As a Christian, there is only one answer to that question. Muhammad is not only false prophet, he is the one of the first prophet Islam identifies. He is the reason. Bible gives us the criteria for the prophet which Muhammad confirms. Okay? Deuteronomy chapter 13. People can come and make miracles, make signs, but when they come and introduce new God, watch out for them, they are the false prophets. Jesus himself talks about the false prophets, and we know Jesus is directly, looks like, talking about Muhammad. Also Galatians talks about Someone comes and then teaches something beside what we identified as the gospel. Do not follow them. Even it is the angel from heaven. Surah 3 verse 81. Muhammad confirms that criteria. Yet, yet, 1.84 billion people are following this false prophet. He is a couple of top reasons why Muhammad is false prophet. First of all, he goes teachings against the Bible. He discredits the criteria which he confirmed in Surah 3 verse 81. Second reason, he worships the pagan gods. Third reason, he comes and discredits his own revelation. Fourth reason, fourth reason, he goes against the teachings of the gospel and Jesus. Therefore, he is false prophet. I would like to thank Hatton. I would like to remind her that the topic is not is Muhammad a prophet according to her fake Bible. The topic is, is Muhammad a true prophet or not? The answer is simple. I will give you an example from the Bible. Matthew chapter 24, verse 34. Truly before this generation ends, Christ will return. He did not. Therefore, by her own biblical standards, Christ is a false prophet. You lady are an apostate. I feel like what the third time now. So the point is simple. I present it to you. She quotes Galatians and then another false gospel. She needs to understand that this refers to Paul's own testimony in Titus chapter uh, 3 verse 9. He commands his scribe Luke to write, do not quarrel about the genealogies and the law. Why? Because the Christians with Paul were arguing about what the law was inside Christianity. Were they supposed to accept the law of Moses? Now she says, 
that uh, Muhammad bin a fake uh, message because he had a different message. The message of Christianity is distinct from the message of Abraham, Moses, David, etc. Now let me remind you of this. If you hold the Bible to be authoritative, you hold Paul to be authoritative. Why does the scribe Luke in Titus 3.9 say, don't write about genealogies, when then when he later writes his own gospel, he has a genealogy in chapter Luke chapter 3. The point is quite simple. Your own biblical criteria, your own biblical standards have been, have been destroyed. It's very simple. Your criteria, hold on. The criteria is very simple. You said if the prophet, peace be upon him, is a false prophet, he must have said some false prophecies. He has never given a single false prophecy. But I have shown you that Christ, the fake Christ in the fake New Testament, has shame on you, woman. You don't need it? Okay. Oh, hot turn. It's getting cold. Are you ready? Emotional Christians. Hold two minutes! Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can speak approximately 120 words. We heard the response, but did we hear the answer? No! Yes, two minutes we did! And no answer to my question. Nothing. All he did was giving me the Matthew chapter 24 to prove Islam is false religion, Muhammad is false prophet, Quran is false book, because Matthew 24 talks about the false prophets, and we all know Muhammad fits in that category. You bring me the Titus and the false Jesus, God himself, which goes against the Quran. Here's my problem. My question has not been answered. Where is my answer? Of course, of course, response comes from the Muslims. Muhammad is true prophet because he never made any false prophecies. Did Muhammad even prophesy anything? Did bad people come to Muhammad to tell him, Oh Muhammad, give us your reasons why you are prophet? Three questions Muhammad needed to answer. What is the food in paradise? How does child look like mother or father? Is that the criteria for Islam to Muhammad to be true prophet? He is the other, other messed up thing in Islam. Let me open the passage for you. Remember, in Surah 3 verse 81, Muhammad confirms the criteria of the prophethood. Yet in Surah 7 verse 57, Muhammad says, they will find me in their books. Finish. It's not in my book. Finish. Yeah, we know it's time. You ready? Thank you, Hatton. Again, I put the question to you. How is Muhammad a false prophet? The easy way to do that, for anyone who has common sense, show where he gives a prophecy and then it's false. She didn't do that. But I did the opposite. I used logic. I used her own book against her. I showed where Christ allegedly made a prophecy and it failed. Her answer showed that she had no answer to. She was silent on it. She quoted it and then nothing else. So thank you for not refuting the point. Now, to addition to this, she mocks Islam by saying, why did the Christians come and ask your prophet these silly questions to prove whether or not he was an actual prophet? It's not my fault that Christians ask stupid questions. Kiss in front of me does that all the time. We don't have to mock you for that, but that's the fact. If that's the kind of reason you want to use, I'll use it against you. Now, the question is simple. I have demonstrated that Christ, their version, made false prophecies. On the other hand, the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, made multiple prophecies that were in fact correct. What is this prophecy? It's narrated from Imam al-Maqdisi in a book on the virtues of uh, Bayt al-Maqdis that the Muslims will find uh, the temple in Jerusalem, the temple, uh, Masjid al-Sakra, the holy ground, at a very specific place. He had never visited Jerusalem in his journey. He gave the description in a hadith to his companions. And when they went with Umar ibn al-Khattab, they went and they visited. 
and you read in the hadith that they looked at the buildings, they looked at the trash, they took a petition with them, and he would say, Muhammad did not describe it in this way, he did not describe it in this way, and finally, when the petition took him to Temple Mount, he said, yes, this is what the prophet is based on him, described it to us. So, simple prophecy, he witnessed and he described in detail what Baitul Maqdis would look like, despite never being there physically, and yet, we have this confirmed by the companions decades after him. SubhanAllah. Oh. Oh. I can hold two minutes, but no answer to my question. Let me just read. The criteria of Muhammad said yes. Listen very carefully. Listen very carefully. If a prophet or one who, pro who foretells by dreams appears among you and announces you, announces you a miracle, sign or wonder. And if the sign or wonder which is spoken takes place and he says, let us follow other gods and let us worship them, you must not listen to them. What Muhammad did? Muhammad did the same thing. Claim to bring the signs and wonders and claim to bring another God for people to worship. And my scripture says, which Muhammad confirmed the criteria of the prophethood. Surah 381. What is it? Muhammad, according to the Bible, with the criteria he confirmed, stands out as the false prophet. Matthew 24. Again, confirms Muhammad is the false prophet, Antichrist. Today, if you stand here and tell me Jesus Christ is not the prophet, I am so sorry to tell you, you've got to butcher your Allah this time and put your Quran under the bus. Your Quran confirms alongside of Jesus creates exactly the way Allah creates even the false star, yet same Jesus identified is in the Quran as the prophet. Why do you butcher your scripture? Shame, shame, shame on Islam and Muhammad is false prophet. You ready to your last one? So again, the question was simple. She's the, she agreed to the topic is Muhammad peace be upon him a false prophet or not? So the simple reason is, give us a prophecy he made which was not fulfilled. She could not do that. Secondly, I gave her a prophecy that was fulfilled by an, by, uh, an Imam of Masjid al-Aqsa. He recalls in his book on the virtues of Baitul Maqdis how the patrician misled the companions to the different churches saying that this was Masjid al-Aqsa, this was Masjid al-Aqsa and the companions without ever having been to Jerusalem only knew it by what the Prophet had foresaw they would have seen and he describes in detail the architecture of the building. It's very simple, a prophecy within their own lifetime, a prophecy that the people of Jerusalem used to this day. Now let me give you a false prophecy. I gave you about her faith Jesus using the fake Bible. I'll give you one that you might enjoy. I will be reading from 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verses, verse 12, I'm going to start with verse 1. It is necessary to boast, nothing is to be gained by it, but I will go on to visions and revelations of the Lord. I know a person in Christ who 14 years ago was caught up to the third heaven, whether in a body or not, out of the body I do not know, God knows. And I know that such a person, whether in the body or not, out of the body, blah, blah, blah. Uh, he goes on to say basically, he goes on basically to say that Christ Jesus gave himself a messenger of Satan. So she's saying in Galatians that if you bring a prophecy other than the gospel, you're a false prophet. Here Paul says he was given revelation by God and was indeed given to him by a messenger from Satan. So at the end of the day, thank you for proving that your book, this book is satanic, that Paul prophesied the false prophet and he lied about the revelation. The answer is simple. Give us a false prophet. I have the false prophecy here at this time. Can you? Let's go. Next one.
Now, of course, she's gonna come with a hypostatic union, man and God say nature. So, I will give her a simple answer. You, lady, are a polytheist, and it's very simple. I suggest that you go to the New Testament and you look at the word usia. It has three meanings nature, essence, and being. It's very simple. Do you worship one God, monotheism, then you worship one being. We're not using the word person here. I'm using the biblical language, who's here? Person is not in the Bible. The question is simple. Does she worship one being with one usia, or does she worship three beings or three persons, which makes her poly a polytheist? Again, the word usia means nature, essence, being. The question is simple. How many natures did Jesus have? If Jesus has more than one nature, then he has two beings according to the biblical language. Now I know you don't know Greek, you can Google it later, but the question is really simple. If you are a monotheist, how can you worship two beings? Third, they'll ask a final question. Is the personhood of Christ divine? I'm not asking about the natures within the personhood, I'm talking about the abstraction of the person itself, as is described by your church fathers. Because if the person is divine, then it also means you worship the human nature. So the question is simple. Do you know what the word usia means? If it means being, then you worship two beings. If you worship two beings, you're a polytheist. There's no question about that. Lastly, I ask again, is Christ a divine person? If he is a divine person, then you worship a human nature. You lady, are you pagan? So, at speaker's corner we have Islamic Dawah team came all the way from somewhere out of UK without even reading and understanding what Christians believe. Shame on you and your mommies, shame on you too. Here is what we believe about Lord Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ is the second person of Trinity. Christians believe one God in one being in three persons. Clearly, Islamic Dawatim identifies me as a polytheist, yet, yet, Quran doesn't identify me as a polytheist. Again, are you trying to be God? Last time I checked, you were just a human being. And your God, Allah, doesn't love the ignorance. Yet you fit all the category. You deny the teachings of Allah. You deny the teachings of the Muhammad. You deny the teachings of the Quran regarding what it means about Jesus. Why else I can understand that? Because Quran identifies me as a monotheist, yet, yet Muslims identify me as a polytheist because Allah doesn't even know what I believe. Shame on all knowing, all loving Allah. Hear what Quran says about Jesus. Listen very carefully. Listen, listen. Allah creates with his breath. Allah creates with his breath and it takes long hours for him to create. Jesus creates, gives lives faster and quicker than Allah. Jesus takes the spots of Allah. You ready? Brothers, I asked a simple question. I gave her biblical language. What does the word usia mean? It means being. I asked her how many being, sorry, how many usia does Christ have? She says two. If you have two beings, then you are a polytheist. You worship someone that is two beings, you are a polytheist. Two in our language means more than one. Just so you're clear. I know you don't speak English properly. But the point is very simple. She did not answer my question. I asked her very simply, what does the word Usia mean? She did not answer. I asked her about person and being, she did not answer. So I'd give you an easier answer then. The New Testament says, 
but the New Testament says that Christ was overpowered by death. Now the New Testament also says that God is the only one who has power over death. If God can lose an attribute, power over death, and death can rival him, then he's no longer God. If you lose attributes, if you're perfect, minus one, you're not perfect any longer. It said for death had powered over him. If your God can lose the power over death, he's no longer God. Then we have a rival to God. That's a problem for you to solve again. Go back to UCF, go back to personal. I don't care that you say he's the second person of Trinity. I did not ask you that question. Shame on you. Please answer the question. I have put the right to Again, I'll make it even simpler for her. The New Testament says that Christ had to go into hell to get the keys from Satan. Why does God need to get something from Satan to fulfill his blessing towards the people? Only God can enter people into heaven, but in her religion, Satan holds the keys. So Allah, go and worship Satan. It'll be better for you. One minute, 54 seconds. Yet, lots of muffling, but no answer to my question. There is something intentional going on there, folks. Watch out, watch out. No answer to my question. Here is my problem. Islam fails to understand what I believe, therefore we see the fruit of Islam here. Put your hand up if you I, if, if you heard, I said Jesus has two nature. Put your hand up. No, I did not. There is Takiya. I did not say that. Do not lie. Shame on Islam. Shame on Islam. Islamic Dawatin. Without any shame, they think they can lie. Jesus is God man. Jesus is God man. Listen carefully. Listen carefully. God man. He took up on himself human nature. Why did he do that? Because of your sins, because of my sins, out of love. God showed us grace. He took his took up human nature on himself. Can you please tell me why Jesus of the Quran creates faster than Allah and creates the way Allah creates, sir? Can you please answer my questions? Can you please answer? Have Jesus even have Jesus even capable to create quicker and faster than Allah? Please do respond. And please produce me verse from the Quran. But by the way, by the way, your reference that Jesus went to hell is not in the Bible. Please give me the reference. Allahu Akbar. Give the reference. Give the reference. All of you will know that Christians today believe that Christ has two natures. You saw me celebrating. She said herself, I never said Christ had two natures. Welcome, you're a heretic. She's a monophysite. The church would have burned you. I celebrate it. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. I call her in a lie. I call her in a lie. And now she's interrupting me. This is the proof that she's ashamed about what she has said. Let me repeat to you what this beautiful book says. In Romans chapter 6, verse 9, it says, We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. Can death, which is an attribute of the uh, ability of God, have power over God? If that is the case, then you, ma'am, are a polytheist. If God can lose and gain attributes, then you worship more than one God. Again, I bring you back to the initial point. Usia means a being. If you worship the Usia of God, then you worship the Usia of Christ. You worship two Usias, that means you are a polytheist. Usia means being. It's that simple. You see that one point and the debate is over, you would have won. Very simple. Now I, I challenge you. There's a book by R.C. Sproul. What is the Trinity? He introduces this problem. A Christian Calvinist. He says that this world creates a problem between the Lutherans and the Calvinists because it makes them polytheists. I don't say that. Her own Christian authors do. I am just quoting them. If she's upset with me, 
for quoting her own brothers and sisters in Christ, then the shame should be on her, not on her. Paul, Paul, one minute for the over 40 seconds, yet respond but no answer to my question. Shame on you, you travel all the way to have a discussion and you haven't done your homework. Here's my problem. Because Quran fails to understand what I believe, therefore I have to deal with Islamic Dawatim because they don't understand what I believe. Shame on Allah, he doesn't understand what I believe. As a Christian, I believe God in one being. Jesus is the person in Godhead. Not the being, the person. Second person of the Trinity. Second person of the Godhead. Took up human nature. Came and dwelt among us. Why? Out of his grace. Out of his grace. Sin of people like me and like each other. Bible teaches me. I don't have any other option besides that to believe Jesus is identified as God. Bible tells me. Jesus himself states, I must honor Jesus exactly the way I honor God. I honor God by praying him, worshiping him. Jesus tells me, do that to me. Jesus has the attributes of God. Jesus has Jesus is the only one who has the attributes of God. Because he has the attributes of God, therefore he can do the deeds of God. Only God can do. It is only Jesus who has the names of God. And Jesus comes from the heaven who is seated in the throne. That is the Jesus. Scripture tells me he is God. Worship him. Brothers, the debate is over, but you saw me shake her hand. You must be asking why. It was to demonstrate to you that she does not read this book, the Bible. Let me read for you what Paul says about dirty unbelievers like me. He says, do not be mismatched with unbelievers. For what partnership is there between righteousness and lawlessness? Or what fellowship is there between light and darkness? If I could just turn the page really quickly. It says, therefore, come out from among them, be separate from them, says the Lord, and touch nothing unclean. She shook my hand. She shook my hand. When Paul and her God said, don't touch the dirty people the unbelievers. I'm dirty. But she touched me, so I know. Now, let me finish the day the Quran says you can't. But the Quran says you can't. Now, let me go on further. While he gives the lecture, let me respond to his lecture. I tell you, 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 I I would suggest teaches, that you go to the New Testament. My God teaches, he loves me so much said, that he gave said. his life for me. Here's the thing, sir. Can you shake my hand? Why are you not shaking Can you shake my hand? Because he accepts the Bible's rule and oh, do not touch the dirty that? people. He's following the Quran and he's not. He doesn't want to shake my hand. He's what following the, the Quran and he's not. Because okay. when Watch they shake out. my hand, Watch out the they become dirty. They become dirty. Why does she reject the Bible? 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 God so loved 
the world that he gave his only son that no one can perish everyone have eternal life through his son and those are the people anti christ just take the when they touch the woman they are unclean they need to go and wash themselves they going so we see they need to wash themselves before they pray because woman makes them dirty yet my god loves them so much it is my god who gave his life for us that's including each other